Two deaths are recorded in Bamidbar 20. The second is that of Aharon, who, as mentioned earlier, died at Hor Hahar in the year 2488, the final year of the 40-year period of the decree. The other is that of his sister Miriam, about whom we are told that upon their arrival in Kardesh Barnea, Miriam dies and is buried at that location. The follow-on pasuk is that the congregation did not have any access to water and the word al against rather than to they congregated they gathered together against the leadership Moshe and Aharon for not providing for the nation's needs. This ultimately led to the incident of Moshe striking rather than speaking to the rock in violation of God's express instructions, which led ultimately to the third death, in this case of Moshe Rabbeinu, prior to entering Eretz Yisrael a short time later. The focus of Bamidbar 20 is the lack of water, Moshe striking the rock, and the decision of God to not permit him to enter Eretz Yisrael. One might argue, therefore, that the inclusion of information regarding the death of Miriam is coincidental, in that in addition to the problems of water supply upon their arrival in Kadesh Barnea, Miriam also died. While one might argue that there is no relationship between the death of Miriam and the focus of Perak 20 in the world of Medrash, we do link the two events, that it was on account of the death of Miriam that led to the absence of water, which led to the complaint against Moshe and Aharon. Underpinning this link is a view expressed in the Medrashic literature that it was in the Zuchut of Miriam that the nation had a constant supply of water throughout the 40 years that the nation remained in the wilderness prior to their crossing of the Jordan. When Miriam died, the water supply also ceased, and hence panic broke out in the camp. Aside for the need of hydration, there was a need for food and need for protection from the elements. The Medrash notes that in addition to water coming to the nation in the Zuchut of Miriam, the provision for food came in the Zuchut of Moshe Rabbeinu in the form of the man and protection from the elements. Predators and the like came from the Anani HaKavod, an envelope of a cloud covering, and this was in the Zuchut of Aharon. And with this we can appreciate the Midrashic statements recorded in the Talmud Yerushalmi and quoted by Rashi regarding the death of Aharon, in that the follow-on pasuk to the death of Aharon, although segmented away from Bamidbar 20, thereby indicating a new series of events, the Jewish subdivision would be that the Vayishma HaKanani Melech Arad Yoshev HaNegev, the threat from the king of Arad who wages war and is somewhat successful, is linked to the death of Aharon. In the minds of the people, there was a direct link between these two events. Aharon dies, they no longer have the protection of the Anani HaKavod, Melech Arad wages war, and certain elements within the camp felt that the only option was to not proceed ahead into Eretz Canaan, but rather move in the opposite direction. This is Rashi's reading of Devarim 10.6, where he introduces a Midrashic interpretation into the text, and writes that this is not a statement of a fact regarding the journey out of Egypt, but on the contrary, this is part of the rebuke begun in the opening Pasuk of Sefer Devarim. In the words of Rashi, Ella af zu min ha Dvarim 10.6 is also part and parcel of the rebuke of the nation by Moshe Rabbeinu in his final address to the nation. And in doing so offers a possible resolution to the multiplicity of questions that have been raised. We will now step through the extraordinary lengthy commentary of Rashi to Dvarim 10.6. Keeping in mind that this is a preamble to the study of the Rebbe's Sicha that we have undertaken for Parshat Ekev. And specifically, the final segment of this Rashi relating to Medrashic statements regarding the death of Tzadikim, which, when it was delivered, coincided with Chaf Menachem Av, the yard site of the Rebbe's father who had been exiled and spent his final years in the Siberian city of Kostroma.